Hey YouTube, MDEX back today for more on our series on harmonization. So today we're gonna pick up where we left off in our last video. We said we were gonna get into inner lines and appoggiaturas, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, before we do that, in case you, you probably already noticed, but the more recent stuff has been kind of advanced. And if you haven't looked at the earlier videos in this series, you might be a little lost. So here's my obligatory disclaimer on saying, hey, go back and check the other videos before you go any further, because it's going to get a little hairy. It actually kind of already has, in case you haven't noticed, if you looked at the last couple videos. So before you go any further, unless you're really comfortable with the content that we're talking about already, I seriously recommend going back and looking at the video series as a series so that you don't get lost and so that you really understand it and know how to use it and can sound awesome. So without further ado, let's get into what we're talking about today, which is inner lines and appoggiaturas. So we use the term uh, inner lines. Uh, we're kind of using it a little, a little loosely because we're just talking basically a line and it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be an inner voicing. You probably remember when we did the baseline conversation talking about moving the bass down chromatically by way of, or stepwise, by way of inversions. That's a line. Um, and when we did line cliches, that was also a line. It happened to be an inner line at times. But a line is a line. We're calling them inner lines, but they can be anywhere. It, has, it can be an inner voicing. It can be a bass voicing. It's just movement that's separate from the melody. And we're going to create these lines or inner lines or whatever you want to call them by way of several techniques, some of which we've already done, the line cliches, the, the bass movement. And today we're going to do it uh, by way of appoggiaturas. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about uh, line cliches too with regard to our conversation today, just to kind of hammer home that point. So an appoggiatura is basically uh, a non-chord tone that you get from that chord's chord scale. So what are we talking about with regard to our song that's in B flat? So if we're using the one chord, if we're using B flat, and we know its chord scale is Ionian, we can use any of those notes that are in that chord scale as a means of getting to a note that's in the chord. And it's also really important to note that you kind of want the appoggiatura to land on a, on a strong beat when you do it, to kind of emphasize the point of it being there. So what a strong beat is, is really subjective, and it's up to you, and it's also specific to the arrangement and the time signature and all sorts of other variables. So we're just gonna say strong beat without defining it. You'll know it when you hear it, trust me. So what we're gonna do is basically just kinda use a really short example uh, first, relative to our song that's not in our arrangement. So what we're gonna do is create this line right here uh, with regard to the first couple bars of O Danny Boy. We're gonna get this line, we're gonna get that's going to be occurring at the same time as our melody. So what we're going to do is use that line, or create that line rather. You can't really get a line. Uh, if you're going to use appoggiaturas, you're going to get a line. All right, It's kind of unavoidable. You can use the appoggiaturas for the sake of just using them, but what you're going to get in the end is a line, an inner line of some sort. So what I mean by that is this. We're gonna take the first chord that was B flat and turn it into a B flat sus two. We're gonna replace the B flat with one of the other notes in B flat Ionian, C, the second scale degree, and we're gonna go to B flat. We're gonna go to a chord, a chord tone. So we're gonna use a non chord tone that's in the scale and go to a chord tone that's also obviously in the scale. And it lands right on one. And that's gonna go to B flat seven and eventually we're going to do this right after that. So before when I mentioned it being like a B flat sus 2 that goes to a B flat, it's kind of not the mentality you want to adopt because it's a slippery slope. That could also be a D minor 7. It could also be a plethora of other chords. So you want to see the appoggiatura tone as something separate from the chord or something that doesn't affect the chord. It doesn't affect the name of the chord you're playing. It's just a way of getting there. All right, so calling it a B flat sus two is not necessary. Not only is it not necessary, it kind of complicates things because, like we said, this grouping of notes could not only be a B flat sus two. It could be this. It could be that. It could be whatever. So don't think of it as a B flat sus two. Just think of it as a means of getting to B flat by way of another note in the chord scale that's not already in the chord. So we're going to use this appoggiatura note on a very strong beat. 
go to the B flat chord, and then the secondary dominant chord that we added way back when in, your, in the earlier videos shows up, our B flat seven. And then for our next chord, E flat, our appoggiatura note is gonna be A. So how do I know I can use A with regard to E flat as an appoggiatura note? If I go to Mapping Tonal Harmony, and I click on the E flat chord, up at the top, it gives me all sorts of really useful information about the chord. Uh, one piece of information that we really want to look at with regard to this lesson is the chord scale. It says Lydian. So E flat Lydian uses all those notes. A natural is one of the notes in the scale. So I know I can use it as an appoggiatura tone to get to B flat, the fifth. All right, I'm just using the fourth to get to the fifth. Okay. In this case, our raised fourth, because it's Lydian. All right. So our our inner line or our line, whatever you want to call it, is going to be this now. And with regard to the melody, it'll sound like this. So that's a really cool, effective way of creating an inner line. And like we said before, there's other ways of doing it, uh, thinking about the bass, line cliches, but now we're doing it by way of appoggiaturas. So a really clear cut and, and good example of an appoggiatura in our final arrangement of Danny Boy occurs in measure nine with regard to this G minor chord that we're using. So if we look at mapping tonal harmony, it tells me that the G minor's chord scale is Aeolian, which is just a minor scale, natural minor. two flats, just like B flat. And so now I know any of those notes in that scale can be used as an appoggiatura tone to approach either G, B flat, or D, our chord tones. So if I'm replacing the fifth, if I'm saying let's get rid of the fifth, and I can use what's underneath the fifth, C, or what's above it, E flat. But either one of those notes are going to go to D, to the missing note. If I want to lose the B flat, the third, my most obvious choices are the A underneath it and the C above it. I'm sorry. Or when we start sounding like more traditional sus chords that you've probably heard a hundred times. Or if I want to do this, omit the root and use the second scale degree as an appoggiatura tone to get to it. So there I'm approaching the root from above, but as we saw on the scale, F is also an option. And if I want to use the modal interchange like we talked about in the earlier video, I can go harmonic, minor, and use the F sharp, all right? So it's that's basically, in a nutshell, what you're gonna be doing with appoggiatoras, uh, landing on a strong beat, using notes that are usually next to chord degrees, chord degrees, that are usually next to chord tones, and these notes that you're using are from the chord scale. Always considering the melody, of course. So another way of creating inner lines or lines is, like we said before, through the use of, of line cliches. Um, a good example of this in our arrangement is in measures 24, 25, and 26. So we have this line cliche in our inner voice that does this. What we're gonna do is have another line underneath it to create two lines at once that move in contrary motion to one another. So you have that line that's doing that and underneath it, chromatically, moving down, we're gonna get that. So we're gonna get two lines simultaneously and they're gonna be interacting with each other in a way that's really cool because one's going up, the other one's going down and this kind of contrary movement uh, makes for some really cool harmonization in any arrangement. And that's gonna sound like this. So there you have inner lines or lines through the use of appoggiatoras and line cliches and stepwise movement on the bass and all these different techniques uh, to do it. 
We hope that was helpful. Keep your questions and comments coming. We'll answer them as best we can, as promptly as we can. Stay tuned for our next video on rootless voicings and deceptive cadences. It's going to be really cool, so check it out. Thank you.